Today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about enhancing your life with rituals. Do you find yourself desiring to live life more intentionally? Have you considered daily rituals as a way to clear your clutter? What different rights can you begin to enhance your life? Learn more about intentional living with rituals as we continue our month welcoming 2021. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? Unclear your clutter inside and out. We'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. Today's episode was inspired by my plant medicine class. So if you've been listening, you know, last April, I started a plant medicine class that will be finishing up in March. And then I'm going to, it's all online and it's incredible. And then I'm going to retake it because there's so much information. I've done everything to get certified and have been doing work every month and it's been phenomenal. And I want to learn more about this. The basis, the foundation, and she says this a lot. So the whole foundation of her teaching is taking tea every day, which makes sense. You get to know the individual plant and tea is one way to do that. And so I've been up and down on this, you know, traveling a lot, just losing Athena. I had a really, really challenging, especially the second half of the year that shall not be named. And so it's something that I have set off the intention with this year. Okay, let's really rock and roll on this. Let's make tea part of your daily routine. Because I think that's really important. And we've also learned other things such as working with sage to smoke and clear. And that are other things that she suggests. But at the foundation is having a meditation every day. I don't mean as I sit here and record this and I've got my tea and sipping that, talking about a very intentional and purposeful ritual with the tea. Rituals can support you in clearing clutter by grounding you, right? They bring you in that present moment and there are a variety of ways that you can do that and that supports clearing mental clutter. You're present, you can release that mental clutter. When you're centered, you are in touch with your spirit, that's going to support you in releasing physical clutter, right? Because you know, I don't have to buy something to fulfill a need. Can also, I'm looking to find someone to interview on this. I want to expand physical clutter, perhaps add body clutter as a new category, because I thought movement to support clearing the tension in your body. A daily Ritual can clear spiritual clutter because it allows us, again, brings us back. When I'm doing those tea meditations and that tea ritual, I'm reminded I am this amazing infinite being. I am reminded of what's important. It brings me back to that. It allows me to hear my soul. Right before Athena died and we had to help her cross the Rainbow Bridge, Literally days, I was doing a tea meditation with Ginger and just this, so a couple things came up, but one of the things was she's spicy, has a spicy essence. And she was said to me, life, you have to embrace life. It's not always going to be good. There's going to be bad, but that's get your hands muddy, get in the muck of life and embrace it and feel it all. And then we had to, let her go. And I wouldn't trade having that sweet soul in our house for anything. And so when you're open to that, when you do that ritual, it allows that wisdom to come in. It can also enhance your health. Now with the tea, have different properties of the plant, different things that can support you. But it doesn't have to be a tea meditation that can support your health. Simply meditating you know, do a little Googling. Meditating can support you in relaxing your body. They're all kind of physical responses that are really great and support your health. And when you are in tune 
with what matters most. When you're in tune with your soul, you get your needs met. And that allows you to release clutter on all levels. You're not going to go into debt buying things you don't need if you're in touch with what's important, what matters most. Now, I want to distinguish that this is different than a daily routine. Now, they can be linked. I view daily routines as the stuff that has to get done, right? The laundry, the dishes, administrative stuff. Many times we do these things kind of on autopilot, right? Without thinking about that. I'm going to encourage you, you can definitely bring intention to anything you do. And the more you do that, I think the more wonderful life is. But I just want to distinguish, this is if you've got all this going on, that rituals that I'm going to talk to you about today are more mindful and they have significance or meaning to you. So just to differentiate, why would you want to create a ritual or a rite? Now, I already mentioned some ways that it can support you in clearing clutter. It can help you make something boring. Boring, as my niece says, more meaningful such as a tea meditation. There's a big difference between mindfully meditating with a cup of plant tea and drinking the tea as I record this, because my focus is on recording this episode, getting information to you. It's not focusing on drinking the cup of tea. You can bring daily rituals into everyday life, just becoming more mindful. Maybe you're listening to this and You say, wow, you know what? I've just got too much going on. And I'm not sure I can even take 10 minutes to mindfully sip a cup of tea. Okay, well then you know what? When you're putting on your moisturizer at night, and guys, you can be moisturizing too, especially in winter. Don't just slap it on. Be aware, how do your fingers feel as it dips into the moisturizer? Or your muscles move if you're pumping the pump to get it out and how does it feel on your face and oh this makes my dry skin feel so soothing it feels so good rituals allow you to be more thoughtful it allows you to contemplate as you're putting on your moisturizer you can think about things or do a mind dump and just like oh i've just got to get this out and then as you put more moisturizer on oh, i'm going to get centered It allows you to connect to what's most important. We have that time to think about things that allows us to turn off the mind chatter. You know, I read, I can't remember what the number was, something ridiculous crazy about the number of thoughts we have a day. And when you're meditating, when you are in a contemplative state, that can help shut that off. Again, it's the ego, it's the noise. I want us in touch with our soul. I want us hearing that. You know, I think it's so important We all need to heal. We all need to heal. And this time allows that process to happen. It allows that process to start. I also believe that daily rituals can help achieve your goal. If visualization, for example, if you're an athlete and you are competing, then you can visualize throwing that discus and seeing it pass 300 yards. If you visualize you are on speech team like my niece Claire and I say encourage her visualize giving an amazing speech visualize yourself feeling confident visualize it just you being at one with the speech and allowing it to flow out right that's that contemplative time of visualizing and creating it's also really wonderful self-care anything in general I feel that you do to be more mindful is good self-care. But if we stop, put the brakes on and say, okay, you know what? Just for 10 minutes, I'm going to be today. I'm just going to be, I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to sit outside and watch the leaves change. I'm going to watch the pretty snowfall. I'm going to watch the birds from the bird feeder. That's mindful. That supports you in caring for yourself, right? We're in this busy, busy, rush, rush world. And even who knows what this year will bring if we'll still be stay at home more. You can be at home, stay at home, and still not 
being, have a mindful practice. And again, there's no judgment here. I do this because I want you to be the best version of you. So this is about self-care. I mean, when you gently and lovingly put moisturizer on your face, that's got to feel a lot better than slapping it on. Become more aware of that and let me know if that's what you find. It can also enhance creativity. It gets the brain going when you're more mindful and contemplate and reflect. It allows you to think of different perspectives. New ideas can pop into your head. I don't know if I've told the story. You cut me some flack, guys. I'm 50, okay? So I don't always remember what I tell you. When I first did Reawaken Your Brilliance was the name of the international TV show that I did where I'd go and record that. And guys really funny, like, ah, come on, come on, I'm going to start it. I'm like, oh, I don't have a name. And my business name at the time was Healing Through Organization. I'd been meditating a lot and doing an okay job of of self-care and everything. And I I kept thinking Thrive, Thrive, and I'd Google all this stuff. And I'm like, ugh, they're like a bazillion things of Thrive. And it didn't feel right. So I literally sat down to meditate. And it was like, it was dropped into my head. Boom. Reawaken your brilliance. Like, there we go. But because of that ritual and meditation and self-care and all those things combined, that allowed me to get universal wisdom. That came from somewhere else. I mean, I feel divinely inspired by that. Yeah, my soul probably had a little part or was open to it. But doing these rituals and rites supports you and being open up to that wisdom. The 21 Day Declutter Your Life Challenge focuses on becoming aware of your clutter and then taking action. In this challenge to clear clutter from your life, we're focusing on physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, financial, health, and relationship clutter. The challenge will run from Sunday, February 7th through Saturday, February 27th. It's free. There's also a $25 paid version where you'll get a PDF journal, a private Facebook support group, and two one-hour coaching calls. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Come join us. How to create ritual. What can motivate you? What benefits can you get? What good habits can you create from this? I'm not a tea drinker. I've had a lot of tea, probably more tea since I've started this plant medicine class than in my entire life. I just wasn't a tea person. So this has opened me up to enjoying tea and I don't add anything, right? If you would have said tea, oh yeah, like why don't we put some honey in it, put a bunch of different things? Nope. And the teas are so nutrient have so many nutrients, and that is supporting me in a good, healthy habit, which was a side effect of beginning this ritual, right? I didn't expect it, but I'm learning, like, plants have a ton of nutrients. When is a good time for you? This is super important. Morning might work for you, or maybe evening makes more sense. In the plant class, she suggests morning. I'm not a morning person, and I have my routines. I get up, have to feed the cats, do the litter boxes, all that. And that's just part of my, I can wake up when I do it, talk to the cats. And that's how I like to start my morning. And so I was like, I'm not doing that. I have to do it at night or on an afternoon break. One of the things I've started since I'm working at home almost exclusively now is I take with an afternoon break. I can do work in the morning. I like having, I'm much more creative and better at having a a longer day than trying to get a bunch of stuff done and breaks help me. And because my husband works a swing shift, then we can take a break and have dinner. And I'm usually done by that time, but I take my afternoon break when he starts work. So make sure it's a good time. If you're not a morning person, that's not a time to create a ritual. Ask yourself, what do you need in this moment? Be flexible. Maybe you need to have a different mindfulness exercise each day. You might say, Julie, you know, the thought of drinking a cup of tea and doing a tea meditation would drive me nuts. That's okay. Then figure out what won't drive you nuts. Ask yourself, what do you need in this moment? 
Maybe for you, you just need to sit for five minutes. You just need to close your eyes. You just need to shut your brain out. Maybe you need to go for a 15 minute walk. You need to clear your head. You're just, you know what? I just need to get going. Ask yourself, what do I need in this moment? Don't get caught up in being perfect. I'm going to encourage you to think of adding a ritual as an exercise in joy and fun. I know most of us can use a lot more joy and fun in life. And it's not like, oh, I've got to get this ritual down and got to be mindful and got to contemplate. No, no, no. Find the joy in that. And it's like Ginger saying to me, embrace life. It's, we're going to have some things that hurt. And that's okay, but feel that experience fully. That's what it means to be alive. This is what I'm going for. Set the stage for success. If you want to make eating breakfast a ritual, now I'd probably fall under routine, but the whole thing we're talking about, how can we make it more mindful? And you feel rushed in the morning, then you set out everything you're going to need to prepare something ahead of time. I haven't tried it. I've seen those recipes where you put like the overnight jar and I think make oatmeal, that's been on my to-do list to try. So that way, if you have everything ready to roll, then you can take those five or 10 minutes and eat breakfast mindfully. I think all of our digestion would benefit, right? If we took the time to eat more mindfully and slowly. Also, think about the daily rituals you might already be doing. Maybe you spend 10 minutes a day just breathing before the kids finish school. Or if you're waiting in carpool lane to pick them up, you take that 10 minutes, you know, instead of getting agitated, you found, you know what, that's my quiet time. I can just relax for 10 minutes. That's a right. That's a ritual. Or maybe you really connect with walking your dog. You're completely present. You can feel the wind blowing. You feel your feet on the earth. You're just completely mindful and you contemplate and you have good conversations with yourself. Or maybe part of a ritual for you is having meaningful conversation with someone you love. I caught up with a friend for a couple hours in college the other day. We didn't quite solve the world's problems. We tried. We had an awesome conversation about healing and what do you do to move forward. Maybe you pray before bed. That's completely a ritual or right. What are some rituals you can try? Saying positive affirmations. Write them down. Put them a couple of places where you can see them. I believe I did an entire episode on positive affirmations, so check that out. But that's something easy to get started. I also like to do things... For instance, and combining them, maybe you can say your affirmations in the shower. You can become really present, feeling the water on your face as you say your affirmations. Again, if it's going to be mindful and not as a distraction, hopefully this is coming across how I mean it. Drinking tea and meditating like I'm doing, or maybe for you it's a green power smoothie and you drink that smoothie in and you visualize or you think, how am I going to embrace today? Or what do I have to be grateful for? Being mind, more mindful in anything you do. Taking out the garbage can be a ritual. I'm so grateful that I have money that I can eat and this is the leftovers or composting can be a ritual. Thank you for everything you've given me. I return to the earth to allow it to be reused again. Walking. I'm really trying to walk each day. I need to get better about it. I haven't felt comfortable going to the gym and everything. And so walking to me is very, it's just, I feel like it relaxes me physically, but it's my time to think. Same with for me mowing the lawn. Being in nature can be a ritual. Hugging a tree. Just simply sitting outside and being present on your deck or your porch. Having gratitude. That's a great ritual to try. I love the month of November 
because I'll see people saying, I'm going to do a daily gratitude for the month of November. And that's a great suggestion there. Maybe, you know what, you do your great daily gratitude in November, and then you switch it up and do another mindful practice and keep it fresh. Reading in bed at night, I consider a ritual, something I do. I, my parents are really great and instill the love of reading in all of us with my siblings. And I try to read something inspiring as a part of what I read at night. Kissing your loved one, kissing your spouse, kissing your partner can be a ritual, right? Instead of a hurried pack, mm, I love you. Thank you for being in my life. It's one thing I always want my husband to kiss me before he leaves. Before I go, I always make sure I give him a kiss. It's a little ritual, but to me it's important because for me it's about connection. Snuggling with the cats and being present, right? You've got a pet, you've got a dog, you've got a rabbit, maybe you're a horse person. That's something that can really be a ritual. I try part of my afternoon break. I have one cat, Nini, that just loves to snug. So I try to make sure that I do that daily with her. I'm working on when I walk Antonio to make that more of a ritual. I tend to take my iPad and check emails when I'm out walking with him because he demands to be walked first thing in the morning. So that's something I'm working on. Again, and even though if we have these separate rituals, how can I bring in more intentional living into my life? Sit and be present. And that's a really good exercise. How crazy is my mind? Can I just sit and breathe and be? Or am I worried about what I have to make for dinner? Am I worried about my schedule for tomorrow? Am I worried about everything I have to do for the move? How can I bring that back and be present? Call your loved ones. That can be a ritual. When I left house, my house at 18, my dad said, I want you to call every Sunday so I know you're alive, even if you're shacking up with someone. My dad's kind of a nut. And so every Sunday, we call my parents. Very rarely have I missed a Sunday. And that's part of the ritual. That keeps me connected to my parents. Clearing the energy of your house. And I know I've done a couple podcast episodes on that. Love space clearing. So many amazing and wonderful things you can do. Set the intentions for your space. That is a way of having a ritual. It's something that I love to do. And I try, am trying to be more on top of that as the seasons change or whenever I feel things are off. I should probably do a space clearing. I should probably do it when we clean, but I don't know. I, one thing I want to stress about all of this is that it's about mindfulness and ritual. I don't want something to become a to-do or that it feels like it has to get crossed off the list because then that defeats the whole purpose, right? If it becomes like, oh, I've got to do my gratitude today, then no, then just take a break. I think you're better served doing that. But clearing the energy in the house might be a way for you to bring in a ritual right that you do maybe monthly. Take actions from today's podcast. Consider what can motivate you to create a ritual. Write down why you'd like to have a daily mindful practice. Acknowledge rights you're already doing. Contemplate what daily practices you'd like to try. Create a daily ritual. Commit to doing your small ceremonies every day. On our next episode, we're talking about better witch than mouse. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. You've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out. Please rate, review, and share us.